Hey, Motor Man here, and this was our class from last Sunday. And in this video, I'm going to tell you about fear level. Fear level, one being the lowest, ten being the highest. And I'll explain the differences. This writer's got a fear level somewhere around a six. And this is the second time of the class. Last uh, two weeks ago, he came and had a very high fear level. So it's dropped. This writer has a fear level maybe two. He's practiced prior to getting there, so he feels confident, has a good handle on the techniques. This writer has almost no fear, but he should because that no fear sometimes bites him because uh, his skills aren't up to his no fear level. This writer's fear level, I would say it's about a four because uh, he doesn't have a lot of fear. He's got a, or getting a pretty good handle on the techniques. He's leaning and turning. So he's a little bit better than average. And this writer has a high fear level. I say somewhere around an eight or nine. She's fighting the motorcycle all the way, doing her best to prevent the bike from leaning. And remember, the bike turns by leaning. The further you lean the bike, the tighter the turn. And she's going way too slow because the brain is telling her, go very slow and it's easier, but actually it's harder. This rider has zero fear. And sometimes it comes to bite him, but if you're gonna make a mistake, this is the place to do it. He told me he's, he's from the Ukraine and practices my techniques at least four or five times a week and it really shows because his skill level was very high this rider was using what uh, some people call preloading the brake that means he's putting way too much pressure on the rear brake and using it as a crutch instead of a little helper that tends to wear out the clutch and the brake heat up the rotor and eventually you lose the brakes in the class and i've seen that happen if you let the bike sit for 10 or 15 minutes they cool down and it's okay, it'll come back, but there's no reason to use excessive pressure or preload that brake. You're using it as a crutch when you do that. Don't do it, it's not gonna help you. It's just a, a clutch and throttle are the main thing. You should be able to do these with a little practice with, with no brake at all. Putting so much pressure on that rear brake is actually a hindrance and it wears out your clutch and your brake. Once again, here's our most fearful rider, leaning the bike just a bit more than she was the first couple of times through, but still nowhere near where it needs to be. Looks at the side she doesn't want to go to, not turning her head enough, and keeping the bike straight up and she can't make it through the gate. Here's our rider with zero fear. He had no fear at all. Practiced, he told me, every day He's from the Ukraine and that was his thing. He practiced. I, he told me that uh, I'm, I'm very well known in the Ukraine and people practice using my YouTube videos. And that's a good thing. I don't know why Ukraine. I didn't think there was a big motorcycle population there, but there must be because I've had quite a few riders come from the Ukraine and tell me how uh, famous I am in the Ukraine. Now we're moving on to the offset cone weave. This is a series of left turns and right turns. The idea being to get the motorcycle to transition quickly from full lean right to full lean left. And it helps out on winding roads, uh, switchbacks, or when a car pulls out in front of you, you have to swerve around it. Here's our most fearful rider. And she's going really slow. She's right at that four to five mile per hour area and trying to keep that bike straight up and turn it at the same time is very difficult the brain is telling her that if she turns the handlebars the bike will lean so to stop that from happening she sort of straightens out the handlebars that prevents the lean and it makes your turns really gigantic and she did tell me that she wasn't trying to ignore the instructions I was giving her she was fighting what her brain was trying to tell her and I fully understand that I know when I tell people to do things a certain way and they don't do it it's not because they don't want to they want to it's just hard to get that information processed and realize that if they just allow the motorcycle to lean like you see this rider doing here the bike almost does it itself this is the natural motion of the motorcycle it wants to turn by leaning it doesn't want to turn straight up And this is our rider with preloading that rear brake using way too much brake pressure. The bike I could tell because I could see the bike sort of bouncing up and down as he's pressing uh, on and off with the brake and really using it as a, 
a crutch instead of a little bit of helper. Hold up. Hold up. I know that some people advise that, but uh, it's you're wearing out the clutch uh, unnecessarily, and of course you're heating up the brake. If you continue to heat them up, you're going to wear out the brake pads and uh, possibly warp the rotor, and that's both big expenses. This rider with the short wheelbase, short rake, whips through here very easily, practice prior to getting to the class, so that helps as well, and it's an easy motorcycle to ride. Again, this is our rider with above average fear level, but his fear level had dropped considerably from two weeks ago when he came to the class. Still fighting it somewhat, and still trying to get a good handle on that clutch and throttle. Now we're about an hour and a half or so into the class and we're up to the intersection or four leaf clover. And as I said, this rider has got a very low fear level, but he sometimes levers a tire off the ground because he leans the motorcycle too far. And here's our rider who likes to use that rear brake as a crutch, also known as preloading. And you can, you're going to see it right here in this shot, what happens with his front end when he puts so much pressure on the rear brake. See it bouncing up and down? That's, that's a crutch. Our rider here with a fear level, I'd say about six. And sometimes he does fantastic. He has what we call moments of brilliance. And sometimes he loses it all together. What we need to do is just get him to put those moments of brilliance a little closer together. He'll be just fine. No quit in him. He's willing to practice. He'll be back. I know he will. And hopefully he'll practice on his own. There's our rider with a fear level below average doing fine. And our rider with a higher fear level. But I think it's dropped to about a 7 now because she is able to make it through the intersection, which is... You know, a series of U-turns. At first she was having problems with a single U-turn. Now she manages to get through all of them. And she promised to practice on her own. She purchased my video at the class, and I know she will. And I'm betting she'll be back, and it'll be a whole new world for her. She'll be looking like this guy pretty soon. No fear at all, leaning the motorcycle to its limits, whipping that bike around like a toy. Remember, the higher your fear level, the longer it's going to take to get the hang of these techniques. Doesn't mean you're not going to learn. It just means it's going to take a little bit longer. And what's the rush, really? you got all the time in the world to become a great rider. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something by it. I want to thank the riders for allowing me to use this to help other students and viewers. And I wish you would subscribe and give me a thumbs up and click that little notification bell so every time I come out with a video, you'll know about it immediately. Here's Motorman signing out. Till next time, keep the shiny side up.